Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 2, Episode 4 of Your Honor. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the whole Big Mo situation. She's trying to get in contact with Little Mo, and Little Mo is obviously locked up with Trey. Trey tried to call his mom, and his mom's like, why... Why did you get in a fight? What were you fighting about? It's like, don't worry about it. It wasn't, it's just we had words. And it's like, she knows something more is going on with that. And especially because she's asking Eugene about it. It's like, you know what that was about? It's like, yeah, they got busted. I I got away and stuff like that. So she knows what the, like, at least what her sister's mixed up in. She knows what Little Mo is messed, uh, mixed up in. She didn't want her son mixed up in that. But it's like, yeah. They kind of dragged him. Once again, this is all on Big Mo because she wanted to go out of her way. Like, right, you wanted to kind of get the drug business, like, boom, and you wanted to kind of do your thing, especially after you had to pull a lot of your product because of the fentanyl. Now it's like, oh, cool, you want to pull the rug on this deal that you're trying to make right now because you're too busy trying to own this club because, you know, your self-interest, once again, whether it's just purely for your girlfriend's sake or whether it's just like a, hey, I want to, like, be a little more legitimate business owner because... Well, as we see, everyone in town looks at her as like, a, oh, you're that drug dealer from the lower ninth. So trying to work her way up in the world and stuff like that, trying to build more for herself. Once again, I don't know if the club's going to be something super legitimate or whether she's going to like launder money through it, whatever the case may be. It just it is personal interest in why she's doing it. But also you're the boss. So like all your business is personal interest. So like don't matter what they want, your people work for you. So, you know, that that's kind of done element of it so obviously she wasn't too happy when she found out little mo got arrested i mean she didn't learn it from her sister because her sister was just like yo like we only re like we haven't talked in 10 years so who died it's like i mean someone has to die for me to call you up it's like we ain't talked in 10 years so that seems like that's the only reason why you would call it's like well i'm looking for our nephew it's like well, he's with Trey right now. It's like, well, where are they? And she didn't even bother explaining, like, okay, they're in jail. It's like, I'm not going to give you an explanation because you brought trouble to my life by doing, you know, all that you've done. And now it's like, it, it, it's all come my way now. Now my son is mixed up in it. Stay away from my son. So she goes and visits him in prison and well, in jail and asks him, like, okay, what's what? Because Roderick rolled up on their place. Luckily, Eugene had the bag hidden. And I guess to make Roderick not think to come back looking, Eugene held onto his bag tight, which I guess later on made... I mean, for Eugene, he did that on purpose, just so Roderick would think, like, oh, you must be hiding the money or something. Like, but there's nothing there. Like, okay. But he still came back later on, so... I think there's a multitude of reasons for that. Because, one, he followed her and found out, like, oh, she was stopping at a prison. I mean, at, at the, uh, the sheriff's department or whatever. I was like, why would you be doing that? So he probably found out about Trey and Little Mo, maybe. And so he was like, okay, probably wanted to see, like, oh, are you trying to trick me? Was it some kind of trap where you set me up type of thing? Like, are they going to try and sell me out to kind of get a plea deal or whatever? Who knows what was fully in Roger's mind? He, Little Mo made the point. And so did Trey. He's not the type of guy you want to mess with. And so he rolled up at their... Um, at uh, Trey's mom's place and trashed it looking for the money, but it was already going. You're like, man, did he already get it? Um, but he didn't. Uh, Eugene took it and made his way back to New Orleans. Now, I don't know whether he's trying to use this as an opportunity to, to get in good with Big Mo, that he's able to do this. He can make things right between them and he can come back to New Orleans because this fake life is just and just isn't for him. Like, I don't, he just can't let this go. Or, is and what I've thought before, um, is he going to try and leverage this opportunity as a situation where he can go after Carlo? I, I don't know if he's still going to be gunning for that. Also, once again, we, I said from the beginning that he was going to find his way back to New Orleans, which is sucky because the entire Baxter family believes him to be dead. So the moment Carlo, the moment Gina, the moment Jimmy, but more so Carlo and Gina, they find out because Gina already has it out for Big Mo. And now she finds out like, oh, you've been harboring this little uh, would be assassin and the one to try to come after my other son. Like it's you see all the smoke building, like, you know, before it turns into a raging fire, you can see. Uh, you can already see, like, the sparks already happening. So, the question is, like, at what point does all this get lit up? It's kind of the, the, the point. So, that's going to be definitely interesting. And I think it speaks volumes that uh, when uh, they rolled up, because Big Mo got uh, Little Mo out. 
and because you was like Ray, the cop, to uh, like push that through, and so they they like, yo, we're not here on the courtesy call. Big Mo's not happy, so it's like, all right, go get the money, uh, but it's not there. They already put one of them pulled out the gun. And it's like, yeah, it's like I guess Big Mo, despite everything, this is your nephew, but you're still well willing to cap him because it's business. It's like, yo, you screwed up one too many times. The Eugene thing, now this, now she, I don't know whether, well, she now probably has a better idea of like, yeah, bring like Lil Mo back to New Orleans because. She, he made it sound like, oh, Eugene just got away or I let him go. She doesn't know that uh, Lil Mo set him up at uh, her sister's place. So She just knew like, oh, he was out there. He's in the wind. Didn't know that your nephew was helping make him disappear. So, And obviously it's like, yeah, that bridge is kind of burnt. So she'll probably get Trey out. But even then, Trey's kind of in that screw position because Roderick didn't get the money. And so he's probably going to still come after Trey, and that's not going to necessarily be their issue because, like, well, they're going back to New Orleans. Thing is, Roger can always follow up with them, and uh, Trey and his mom can point them towards Big Mo, and that's where we could get all the smoke and all the issues on that front. There's just so, so many things happening at once. So while all that's happening, we have Michael and Jimmy, Jimmy dropping them off, and I love that the moment Michael had to stop and be like, How'd you know that I was staying at my mother-in-law's place? And Jimmy just kind of smiles. He's like, yeah, of course he's going to know what's what. It's like, hey, it's my birthday party coming up. I want you to come. I also want you to invite Charlie. And you're like, all right, I see how this is. It's like, you want to put Charlie in a position where you kind of leverage him. And so it's like, oh, it's all about leverage around here. So, of course, Jimmy's going to try and take advantage of this opportunity to leverage uh, and use Michael to get to Charlie. Which even Charlie saw through that. It's like, right, he just... Michael knows that's what's what, too, but he's in a screwed position. Um, Olivia wants him to go to the party, wants him to get close to Jimmy, and it's like, well, what am I supposed to see? It's like, she's like, I don't know, just, you know, keep an eye out. Now, I think the biggest thing that's going to end up being a contributing factor to all of this is there's dissent, um, not dissent, but there's a fallout between Gina and Jimmy. They're not seeing eye to eye. In fact, Gina looked like she feels like Michael's going about, I'm not, yeah, Jimmy is going about things the weak way. So she's like, right, made that whole point. Like, if this, this whole thing, like, if it had my family name on Conti on it and not Baxter's, this be a whole different conversation. It's kind of her perspective on it. So, even to the point she invites her dad, which I'm like, yo, isn't that home dude from, um, God, I think he, I don't know if I've seen, I've only seen like a little bit of like the first season of Breaking uh, Better Call Saul years ago. Uh, I need, I need to jump on that at some point in time, but with, I know that's the dude from Breaking Bad, right? Uh, what's the character's name? Hector? The dude that Gus had beef with and spoilers ended up being his own. I think that's the same actor. I can't, I can't tell or not. I want to say that's him, but I could be mistaken. Um... Either way, Olivia is, you know, I, I love that she's going, making this whole analogy about, like, horse racing, which you're like, oh, it seems like there might be a little bit of a gambler in you, and I don't, I don't know, like, because she talks about the fact is that she acknowledges, like, oh, you're kind of, like, a messy person, but when the time comes, I know you're going to pull through and shine at that last minute, like, you know, making a reference to the horse races and stuff. And the fact is, while she was listening to the uh, bug she put on him, the fact is that she was watching, like, a horse race, and you could tell it didn't go the way she wanted it to. Very symbolic, considering everything with Michael didn't go the way she wanted it to. Uh, because she overplayed her hand because she made a mistake where she was like, yeah, focus on Jimmy, not Gina. And it, that made Michael go, how'd you know it was... Gina, I, I never specifically said Gina was the one that all I said was I wasn't welcome here. I never specifically said it was beef with Gina. It's like, all right, so he's checking everywhere and he finds the bug in his collar. And I guess he was trying to be quiet. Either he was like, sight because he says fuck. So that could be because, damn it, you put a tracker, you put a listening device on me. That's one. Or two, it's just like, I was trying to be quiet so you wouldn't know I found it. But it's a good thing he did find it. And it's a good thing he took care of it. We don't know what he did with it. All we know is like he took it with him. So I don't know uh, unless he hid it on his phone somewhere. But I, not unless it's like inside of his phone or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm like, I have no idea where he put that. So good thing he didn't have it on him later on. But we'll get to that soon enough. But, uh, yeah, uh, so going back and filling in certain things, Charlie comes to the party simply because Michael had the element of, 
yeah, Adam and Fia had a baby, so uh, this could be our opportunity to um, meet their grandchild. And obviously, it's like that means a lot to Charlie, so it's like, all right, I'll think about it. And he ultimately does show up. Um, I even love the whole thing of, uh, it is, this, you could tell there's this bittersweet element between Michael and Fia, because for Fia, she feels like, why she's holding on to Michael so much is because it's like, right, that's, that's, that's Adam's father, so by holding on to him, like, not only will I have Rocco, but I have a little bit of Adam by being close to his dad, plus, despite your mistakes, in her mind, it's like, you're better than every person in my family, she's like, I know who my family is, and it's like, I think she still wants, she loves Carlo in that, but she's still a lot closer to Carlo than she is her mom and her dad, she was close to her dad at one point in time, but it's just, I think, him not kind of, like, him doing things the way he does, it just, it finally was just kind of like, no, because like, in her mind, it's like, Carlo and Gina are supposed to be the ones that are so much alike, you and me are supposed to be on a team, but she feels like Jimmy leans more towards them, like, he's more 60-40. He's, like, 40% her, 60% Carlo and Gina. And I think that's what just kind of pushed her over the edge, especially with everything. It's like, I don't want that. I don't want you around my baby. But I don't have much of a choice in my family. But also, like, I, I need someone in my corner I can trust. Because when because she's even telling Michael, like, don't even go to the party. Bad things happen when my, my family's around. And Michael's like, bad things happen when I'm around, too. And she, for her, so it's like, I need someone to trust. And Michael feels bad because it's like, right, this is the, he knows, she, he knows who Fia is. Fia's a, like a good kid. She's got a good head on her shoulders. Fact is, Adam loved her. They had a baby together. And it's like, he doesn't want her involved in all of this. And he feels bad about using her just for that purpose. And, you know, it's like, so I think just like Charlie, he's like, I'm doing whatever I need to to protect Charlie. I think he's going to try and do what he can to protect Fia too. Because it's like, right, it's not just about her. It's also about your grandchild. And it's also what Adam would want. So you'd, you'd want to like give your dead son, um, you know, you want to do right by him in that regard and helping out the woman he loves, the, the mother of his child. So, and that, that dynamic is just interesting because, like, I think she adds an element of grounding Michael again because, like, he's afloat. Like, he has, n like, nothing left. She was the one that was able to kind of ground him, especially with Rocco Adam Baxter. But also, uh, you add in that... That dynamic is also like, he needs her just as much as she needs him, and that causes beef of Jimmy, because Jimmy's like, whoa, 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 why is it I can barely get a word in with my daughter, but suddenly she turns to you, because Michael isn't you, it's the sad thing is, despite all the bad things Michael's done, like, I think it's still the justification of like, yes, Fia doesn't know everything that Michael's done and every reason why he did what he did, but she still sees him as a better person than her, anyone else in her family, so that and that kind of puts Michael in uh, Jimmy's crosshairs because like cool how'd you get out of prison why are you trying to get so close to my family like you could tell it because it felt like I mean for one it's like the only reason why I'm here Jimmy remember you invited me you wanted to use me to get to Charlie so you could put on this whole spectacle of like yeah Michael part of the family oh Charlie yeah oh hopefully you can be the godfather of my um my grandchild too just like you were the godfather for um for uh, Adam, and it's like, hey, here's my father-in-law, let's all take a picture together, so it's like, yeah, that's not gonna smooth things over for, you know, Charlie and Michael saw that for what it was, it's like the power play of like, yeah, now you're in pictures with me, like, once again, leverage, you know, which feels like, I didn't know my dad was gonna pull that stunt, but Michael's like, no, it's okay, it's just, you know, I think for, once again, for Fia, it's just, it's just too much, so... And obviously, Gina's not too happy about Michael being here because Michael being there is just a reminder of like, hey, this is the guy who did obviously a lot to cover up for his son, but also his son murdered my son, so that beef's not going to go away. So it's like, stay away from my family. It's like, well, no matter what, you're always going to be family because he's the he's also the grandfather of your grandchild. So, and because Gina once again doesn't like the way things have been run, and 
even Charlie made a point of like, yeah, like her father hasn't been stepped foot back in New Orleans since like the 90s. Like apparently he lives off like somewhere in Italy. Like he's that's where he's been the entire time. So what's making him come back now? Because he's trying to get the family back in line because Gina was just like, right, the way things are going, she doesn't like the way Jimmy's running things. And so now he's going to have to kind of fall in line with her father-in-law around. I mean, with her father around, with his father-in-law around. He's going to have to fall in line and kind of shape things back up. So... With everything with desire going on the way it is now, and everything with, um, I mean, once again, the um, the Baxters aren't on like on, on him and Gina, like Jimmy and Gina aren't on the same front, and now her father being here is going to make her slide more on. Um, he's definitely going to have her back in that, so it kind of outnumbers Jimmy, especially because Carlo's not going to fully have his back because it's like yeah, because. Gina talked about the fact is that things aren't always good between her and her father, but they have a better relationship now. And so she wants Carlo to have that same thing with Jimmy. But Jimmy's like, yeah, because I'm your son, like, I take after you more. He's never going to fully love me. So I guess maybe Rocco, like, took, I mean, Rocco and Fia take more after him than Gina. I mean, that's also why Gina and Fia don't, like, see eye to eye. Maybe th there are some similarities, but there's so, those differences are, like, so vast that that's why they have such beef the way they do. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like Carlo's going to be more on his mom's side or, you know, maybe he's going to try and be in the middle ground, but, uh, middle or middle might as well just be on her side too. Once again, I think that's a neat parallel because I, once again, I do believe that's why Fia has issues with Jimmy too, because it's like, you're not on my side. You're not fully on mom and Carlo's, but you're still somewhere in the middle and it's like, you know, and that's still not good enough. And once again, I said it before, I still feel like it's not even fully middle. I think it's more, he's 60, 40. Like Fia once again being the forty, uh, Gina and Carlo being a sixty, but he's he wants to lean more the other way, but he he doesn't, you know. So we'll see how that all uh, plays out. I mean, especially because Jimmy was like, okay, like oh, like before I was going to threaten to kill you when I thought you took one of my ch children away from me. Are you trying to do it now? And he's like, oh, I'll go ahead and kill you. He's like, Michael's like, go ahead. It isn't just a, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to, like, that was real. Well, I mean, once again, we've seen his arms, his wrist. He has tried to kill himself before. And the fact is that he was fine with Jimmy. He's like, no, go ahead, do it. Put me out of my misery. That way, if I'm out of the picture, I don't have to cause any more hurt. Like, I have no reason to, like, live. Like, for him, he lost his purpose. It's like, like I don't have Robin. I don't have... um I don't have Adam, and yes, I have a grandchild, but me being around might cause more problems for that grandchild than me being out of the picture, because if I'm not out in the picture, then Charlie can't be uh, you, like threatened by Olivia, and Olivia can't use me to try and get close to the Baxters to bring that whole thing down, so... But Jimmy seeing him like so broken, like, oh, he has nothing to live for makes him like, I'm not going to be your executioner. Now, either that's a thing of, hey, I, I want you living in misery or is it just kind of like, a, oh, I guess you really have nothing to live for. So what would you gain by doing like I think both things elements could be true in that regard for Jimmy on why he didn't pull the trigger. And like Michael has that sigh of relief, but it's also like, it's hard to say if that is like a full sigh of relief. Cause that looks almost like a, I almost found my way out of this, you know? Um, he, uh, he even said that that's the reason why they released him early because it's like, yeah, they didn't want my blood on their hands. And it's like, but you, it's fine with it. Just go ahead. He's like, go ahead and do what you got to do. And you know, so I think Jimmy does see that as sincere of like, that wasn't a ploy. Like that's him. You know, because I think Jimmy, you know, knows what it is to lose a child. Um, obviously, sadly, so he understands where Michael's coming from. So it's also like a, yeah, I see it. I see the broken man before me. So we'll ultimately have to wait to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. It's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day. And... Goodbye.